For the third weekend in succession, the unbeaten New Zealand cricket team is on show at Eden Park in Auckland for their fifth match in the 1992 World Cup. It's a fine and humid day and this pitch for this game against the West Indies is being used for the first time in the World Cup competition. Hello from Eden Park, welcome to Highlights, an important match for both teams, New Zealand against the West Indies, New Zealand four wins from four matches, the West Indies only two wins from four matches, and at the moment just outside the top four. Remember, four teams will go to the semi-finals after the preliminary round of eight matches for each team. The forecast for today is for some showers during the day, so I wonder if that's going to affect the thinking of the captain who wins the toss. Let's go out to the middle for the toss now, Richie Richardson of the West Indies, Martin Crow of New Zealand, and they're out there with Keith Quinn. We're going to bowl, um, see if we can get them out early. What do you think of the conditions here this morning? Remarkable transformation. Yeah, fantastic. I, uh, I, I expected a delay, but uh, they got everything right, and it um, looks as though it's going to be a reasonable day. OK, Martin, your team's been more or less published. Can you confirm for us that uh, the three guys who are not playing? John Wright, Chris Cairns and Murphy Sewell. OK, Martin, thank you. Thank Play you, well. Keith. Thanks. Thanks. Richie Richardson, would you like to have won that one? Well, if I'd won, I think I would have batted, so... It's worked it out pretty well, then. It didn't matter, really. Um, I think uh, the wicket looks good. Uh, uh, but the outfield is pretty wet to me, and uh, I believe you know bo bowling with a wet ball would be quite difficult. So, you know, I would have. It's not nice and humid here today. Is it a bit more, more like conditions at home? Well, um, well, uh, this, yeah, the sun is shining, the sky is blue, and um, that's what it's normally like. But apart from the green outfield, I mean, it's you know, very much like home here. Yeah. Okay, Richie, who's uh, not playing in your team today? Um, Simmons, uh, Patterson, and uh, Harper. Uh, so here's the West Indies side for this match against New Zealand. Haynes and Lara to open the batting. Richardson to come in at number three. Then Hooper, Atherton and Logie, the rest of the specialist batting lineup. Malcolm Marshall up as high as number seven as the all-rounder. David Williams, the wicket keeper, then the pace bowlers to finish. Kirtley Ambrose, Winston Benjamin and Anderson Cummins. The New Zealand side for today. Mark Greatbatch preferred over John Wright as the opening batsman. Rod Latham to go in with him. Then Jones, Crow, Rutherford, Harris, Patel, Smith, Larson. Morrison in the side ahead of Chris Cairns today and Willie Watson to complete the lineup back in the New Zealand team. So Martin Crowe, the New Zealand captain, has won the toss and asked the West Indies to bat first. It's Haynes and Lara to open with uh, New Zealand using Danny Morrison and once again their ace card Deepak Patel to share the new ball. And there's the first runs and it's taken them, uh, what, 14 balls and we're in the third over. And Desmond Haynes just get nipped on the fingers again. Well bowled by Morrison, a big call. Looked fairly close first time up, let's have another look. Well, it did look pretty good. Well, did a bit, and judge for yourself. Yeah, it did quite a lot. And that's exactly it, short outside the off stump, just as Glenn was saying, and it was hit away for four. That was a bad ball, the first really bad one Morrison has bowled. Short and wide, and just using the pace of the ball and slashing it over the top. So New Zealand doing well, holding the West Indies in the eighth over. Only 15 runs. Well, that's a run, runs off at the face of the bat, slicing away, a chase for Jones and two runs to Desmond Haynes. The runs are being squeezed out like toothpaste out of an awkward tube. It's in the air, it's over the top, it's four runs, and they're giving Morrison there again, giving Lara a little bit of room outside the off stump, a little bit of width, and Lara gratefully accepted it. Yes, well, just a slip in a gully there. He can't afford to bowl full and out there. Lara will just give it the full flourish, and although there was no real control in the shot, he knows it's fairly safe. Now here's Larson. It's in the air, and just over his head. Agonizingly close. Tremendous effort by Danny Morrison. If he'd just been another six inches taller, Tony, I think he might have had that one. We see here that uh, he didn't really get onto this, did he? And uh, Danny uh, had to run back quite a way, but it was a great effort. In fact, often those ones stick, don't they, if you can just get near them? He's got that one. That's the middle of the bat. So Larson being too short here. And uh, Brian Lara quickly fastening on to the second one. Yes, at last it's pace. He can't afford to be short to players like Lara. He's so strong in that area, Tony, and... Uh, we saw there that he really got onto that, didn't he? 
Massa's got to get up, get him coming forward. Sweet, Lovely shot. Beautiful straight drive by Brian Lara, who's now starting to accelerate, and this is what the West Indies really were looking for. A rather desperate situation with the first 11 overs just producing 22. Last we're seeing here, I said he had to keep the ball up, but he was just the overtossed there, and uh, Larson, I don't think, would have gone for as many runs in his first over as this in any of the competitions that he's played in. And he's banged that away as well. This could go all the way. The outfield is a bit slow after last night's rains but it just has enough carry to reach the boundary. And that's just the type of over the West Indies wanted. 36 without loss after 12. It's in the air, and it's gone all the way. He's got hold of it for a six. Just dropping it in a little too short, and Desi Haynes has dispatched it over that short square boundary. Yes, he just did look, he just played it so easily, didn't he? He didn't seem to have any power at all in that shot, but look at the, where it went to, up into the terraces there. Just can't afford to bowl short to players of Haynes' ability. Yeah. Typical Desmond Haynes shot. He really is very adept at that little guide through the vacant slips area in the one-day game. So he's starting now to accelerate. The West Indies have reached their 50 in the 17th over. Yeah. Haynes starting to get the momentum going. He's turned it very well. Larson might struggle to get it. He did it pretty well, Richard, because it's fairly damp down there. And although that might have slowed the ball, it also made it difficult for Larson to get to it. Yes, he did very well. Typical Desmond Haynes shot there, just working it down the, the leg side. And Gavin Larson, he had a long chase, and it is quite damp down there, quite a bit of sawdust down there as well, but he just pushed, flipped that ball back and recovered well. Oh! Well, that's another fine nibble around by Lara this time. And who's got a longest chase for that one? It's Andrew Jones coming around from backward square leg. And Jones did pretty well to contain them to three. That looked as if it had four run written all over it. And it's a lovely shot from Lara down the ground. It was in the air a bit, but really gave Ollie Watson no chance. And the 19th over has come to an end. It's 65 for none. Oh, it's a chance for Clinton Bowen, and Harris has got it once again. In his first over, Chris Harris has taken the wicket with a magnificent court and bowled from Haynes. Haynes, court and bowled Harris, 22. And the West Indies have lost their first wicket at 65 in the 20th over. Well, New Zealand have waited a long time for this wicket. Harris just moving that ball into Haynes. A little bit of bottom hand there and a very good diving catch. And uh, New Zealand fielders, or bowlers, have been very good at taking court and bowls in this competition. And Desmond Haynes will be disappointed to get out, but 65 for one, New Zealand will be happy. better to dive then he's not going to stop that it's four runs beautifully timed by um, Lara he just leant into that and I think if Patel had launched himself like a diver he might have stopped it yes he did he just stroked that he didn't even follow through so it just shows doesn't it if you get the ball in the middle of the bat and you're timing right how it can still go through to the boundary Oh, that was through Richardson. Again, he didn't come right forward. Again, there was that sort of walking stroke. Could so easily have given Smith a catch. I think it may have left him here, actually. Yes, he played inside it. Goodish delivery. But once again, a lack of foot movement there. Just caught on the crease. And the ball doing a little bit and being left stranded. Yeah. Brian Lara gets his third 50 in the competition, his fifth overall in one day the nationals for the west indies the little left hander from trinidad and tobago has played very well for his 50. played very well hasn't he played some beginnings at innings when he got 88. looking to see not a lot of boundaries but uh, he certainly picked up the ones and twos
He's out. Lara goes. Simple catch to point. And for the third time in this inning, in this competition, Brian Lara has been caught at point. He was caught there against South Africa, against Zimbabwe, and now for the third successive time he's been caught at point after making 52. We're seeing here this ball uh, actually bounced a bit on him, didn't it? He didn't really have the room, and as you said, uh, once again, caught in that region, but well batted. He's batted well for the West Indies this morning. What a desperate save. These New Zealanders really are playing it as if they intend to win this competition. They've done that from the very start. And that's a magnificent effort on the boundary up there from Danny Morrison. Patel with his last over now. And the West Indies have raised 100 in the 32nd over. Just the two wickets down, so they've got the base for some aggression towards the end of the innings, but they'll need it. a huge hit but it's a catch as well back there waiting for it to drop and taken a deep run on he had to wait an eternity out there now great batch and Carl Hooper goes caught by great batch on the fence that ball had icicles on it before it came down and the West Indies have lost their third wicket Carl Hooper going cheaply once more as we're going to see here, he decided to get after the job, got to him, got a lot of height on that, but uh, this was a very well-judged catch. Look how long Great Batch had to wait for it to come, and he made sure he took it. But another blow to the West Indies, but a great wicket for New Zealand. Well, he can't be short like that. That was too short, too easy, and Atherton has his first boundary. Well, Latham was a lot slower than any of the other uh, New Zealand bowlers, with the exception of spin bowler Patel, of course. But, but Latham has been a bit of a surprise package for New Zealand and did quite a good job, particularly against the Englishman in the domestic uh, international series. But in the World Cup, he has struggled. There he goes again, the same place. It's not protected yet either. Well, if he's going to bowl short outside the off stump, then really he's got to have a man square on the boundary. And the cover point boundary, I mean, that short and wide just sits up to be smashed, and Arthurton has been very severe there. So really he's got to straighten up his line and get his length right. Oh, it's a wide ball. That's going to be four buys. Four wides, I think, Richard. Wait for the umpire. It is. Four wides. Well, Ian Smith would normally stop those, but really it's the fault of the bowler he's certainly not getting the target right it's going wider and wider wasn't it so it's uh, Richie Richardson and Keith Arthur together 12 overs to go as Willie Watson starts over number 39 the ball's high in the air Smith's underneath it wait for this it's out first ball after drinks West Indies captain is gone It was time for a summit conference while that ball was in the air, Bob. Once again, when these guys hit it, we see here, it wasn't short enough to pull. And all he succeeded in doing was getting up in the air. And look how long Smitty had to wait. But I'm so pleased to see the keeper there with the gloves on because they're the ones to catch those sticklers. And what a blow from New Zealand. That's, that's just what they needed. These two look as if they were getting on with the job. Richie Richardson gone for 29, 136 for four. Yeah, very casual here, and I was almost going to suggest that Crow bring in another fielder to keep Logie on strike as the incoming batsman. Let's watch and just see. Well, no, it's nipped back through the gate. He just pushed through it, left a nice little hole there between bat and pad. Harris got the ball to move in, but Logie won't be happy with that. 142 for five. He's got in. Marshall trying to host it over mid-wicket, missed the shot. Larson gets his second wicket 
The West Indies lose their sixth at 156 in over number 46. Yes, we're going to see here that uh, Marshall looking to hit this ball over mid on. It was uh, really a straight ball. It, uh, if it deviated at all, Henry, uh, uh, Tony, I think it just drifted in, but uh, rather a loose shot. And the score at the moment is the West Indies are 156 for six in the 45th over. He's got it away, that's four. Just a little leg lands to a low full toss and Williams has got it away for four. Boundaries are what the West Indies need now and Williams has got that one away for one. Yes, we're seeing here that uh, just a little too full there. Look to be pitched on middle and leg. No one fine. We have a man down there at fine leg, but he's rather square. Full toss. Bad ball. Put away by Williams. On the first bounce for four. So New Zealand just uh, starting to, to lose their way a bit here. Bad ball. Full toss. Yes, we're seeing here that just sat up there and has to be hit to the boundary. Down the ground, and Williams has got it high in the air, and uh, just inside the boundary. So Williams has started to go now, and uh, he's got another boundary. He's had three boundaries so far, and uh, just enforcing the confidence which Captain Richardson has had in him in putting him above Ambrose. Yes, we see there that that ball was wide. He hit it on the up. And that's another one. It'll go for four, so Williams really on fire here. It's his highest one in the national score. And he really still started now to open up against Willie Watson. Well, it's another bad ball to start the over now. Watson started the previous one with a full toss, which Williams hit before. He's just going to get the same way. Well, this is very good striking by David Williams. Exactly what the West Indians want. Watson, he's, he's trying to get the ball right up there on the block hole and and bowl Yorkers and that's where it's got to go but a low full toss is probably just as bad as a, as a short ball I mean you can just swing it away and that's what Williams has done very effectively Atherton swings high but Jones is down there well that's good running and I don't know whether Martin Crowe would have been too happy with that fielding from Jones He's now on four and over as Atherton gets another full toss and it's in the gap again so they're picking the gap pretty well the West Indies and Willie Watson's full toss has gone for another boundary it's 198 for six yes well Watson's got it wrong I mean that is really a lamb chop nice juicy full toss that the batsman can really take toll of virtually hit it anywhere Five balls left, and there's the 200 for the West Indies. Well, the umpire might have a look at that, but uh, Smith must have been very close to having Atherton out. A quick shy, he had to have a go for it. Oh, yes. Definitely out. Anyway, a couple of balls to go now in the innings. And it's 201 for six. And one suspects that uh, the bat will fly almost in any direction now, let alone the ball. <laughs> oh, he's bowled him. Danny Morrison bowled the ball and then pulled up a bit lame and you can see that he's limping there. A bit of concern amongst the New Zealand camp for Danny Morrison but also a bit of pleasure that he has bowled Atherton with just one ball remaining and Atherton leaving bowled by Morrison for 40. It's 201 for seven. Well, well bowled by Morrison and well deserved too because uh, he started so well with the new ball 
and wasn't rewarded. He's come back late in the innings and dismissed Arthurton. He's batted pretty well for his 40 runs. 54 deliveries, three boundaries in that. So here's the last ball of the innings. It's Benjamin's first. And it's one, it's two. And 203 is the score. 203 for seven. After 50 overs have been completed and some very good performances in the field by the New Zealanders have restricted the West Indies score to 203. 203 for seven, the West Indies scoring 45 runs in the last five overs, so they've done well to get up to 203 for seven. Coincidentally, the same score that India made in 32 overs against Zimbabwe yesterday in Hamilton. The top scorer, Brian Lara, 52 from 81 deliveries. Some solidity in the middle order there from Keith Arthurton, 40 from 54 before he went in the last over. And David Williams hitting out well to score 32 at the end. 203 for seven and 50 overs, the West Indies final score. Here are the New Zealand bowling figures. Danny Morrison took a wicket in his last over. That was well deserved. Deepak Patel opened the bowling and did quite superbly in three spells. One for 19 from 10 overs. Willie Watson conceded 56, but 27 of those went in the last two overs. Gavin Larson, conversely, went for 14 in his first and came back to concede only 41 overall. Chris Harris was the best New Zealand bowler today, two for 32, and Rod Latham had an unfortunate bowling experience. Well, that's a good start for New Zealand. Welcome back, Bob. Well, just a listener, but uh, a little bit of carry there, good bounce. Well, here's an example of great batch being allowed to get on the front. Well, really, the ball was much fuller than the others it had been, but uh, a little wide too. So great batch took the chance, got bad on it, four runs. It's over the top and safely for Latham. So he gets his first runs, not entirely convincing, but he'll be happy to get the ball from the bat. And great batch wanted three. Well, that's a rare delivery to the hip that's reasonably full, and of course, on the leg stump there. And Great Batch very strong on his legs, a lot of left handers are, and really he he dealt that one. That could be no, not out. Umpire Peter McConnell was bringing his hands round, I thought, perhaps to answer that appeal in the affirmative. Outside leg. Well, he certainly pitched outside leg, and of course, uh, there's no way the batsman can be out LBW. Oh, is he going to be out? No, it's not. It's four runs. Uh, there was no way that that, um, that was going to be stopped down there at uh, fine leg by Cummin. He did his best. It was just fine of him. I thought for a moment it was going to be catchable. Well, that's what great batch is there for. Anything sort of short, wide, full, over-tossed, anything of that nature, he's got to fly his bat at it. <laughs> oh, it's over the top. It's just over the top of second slip. Had the Ambrose been feeling it second slip, he'd have bent down to catch that. But uh, it's a difficult game if you're going to end up Logie's height there. And away it went for four. End of the over, 24 for no wicket. stood there and couldn't believe watching that ball whistle over wide mid off the six and that has gone well over well how's Cummins going to reply to that well, it's in the air is it over That's the six. top it is it six, six runs it's climbed as high as the Eiffel Tower and there's 
sixth being signaled by Peter McConnell. And Greg Patch is living merrily. He's gone to 29. And what an outsplendid stroke. It may have been a bit edgy, but I tell you what, it was taller than tall. Yes, well, it certainly went very high. Short again. The great batch getting under it, helping it on, on its way. And that's back about 15 rows into the terraces. Well, they got in. I don't know what would have happened when hit the stumps, but Latham was running down the wicket like a human cannonball. And indeed, the ball ran into him. Isn't this exciting? It's 48 for no wicket. Martin Crow in the headband there, you can just make him out. He'll be pleased. Yeah, run, run oh, steered down to third man. It's a chase for Marshall. Or is it four? It's, I think He's it's gone it. through before. It has, and that is the 50. 50 coming up in the 10th over. A wonderful start for New Zealand. Uh, Great Batch has got 30. Latham, don't forget the part he's played too. He's made 12. And it really is all the fun of a super fair. It's in the air, down towards third man. Cummings, the fielder, six more. This is unbelievable stuff. And currently Ambrose can't believe it, nor can Warren Lees. This is quite astonishing. Third six for Great Batch. Well, it's a miscue, but fortune favours the brave. He's given himself some room and he's swung very hard indeed, and it's gone clear third man for another six, and Kirtley Ambrose just can't believe it. and hit back past Cummins that went like a rocket great match just on fire and Cummins here was under threat really of getting his head knocked off with the batsman progressing down the wicket towards him and blasting it past him even the umpire was in great danger with that one he hit it as clean as a whistle stump vision <laughs> He's got him, the first wicket is gone. So that break, which was caused by the crowd, I would suggest, has had an effect on the game. Immediately after it, the West Indies have come together. They've had a mid-pitch conference while the police were reinforcing themselves over on the far side, and immediately after that, a dismissal. Yes, it was just short outside the off stump, perhaps didn't do a lot and just hanging out the washing there. Latham, so New Zealand's first wicket down at 67 in the 12th over. And that's a magnificent on drive. Great batch, really in top form here. End of the over at 73 for one. Watch the drive and on drive. Now watch here the timing. He's in beautiful position over the top of the ball and just pushes it very hard indeed through mid-on. Now that was a shot of class rather than some of the uh, blunderbust shots that we've seen prior to that, which is very exciting and so on. But that was very unspectacular and yet showed real class. striking the ball beautifully. Well, this is through that off. They've got a long on in to bring up that man. And that's great batches. 50 from just as many balls. That's his sixth one day 50 and the second of this competition. Eighty-five for one. We're in the 18th over, so New Zealand have started with a rather slow and perhaps understandably hesitant start. 
but since the fifth over they've decided to take the attack to the West Indies bowlers and as they've been successful the quality of the bowling has just wilted a little. And there goes Greg Batchelway swinging the first ball of Cummings' next over. It was short, a little bit of width outside the off stump, but it wham, it went away over cover for four runs. So Great Batch has not lost the touch, he's merely biding his time. That was a handsome blow. Takes him to 60, it's 92 for one. Oh, he's gone, he's out. Jones fat that off the back foot without moving his feet got the edge and Williams has taken his second catch and New Zealand now 97 for two Jones has gone for ten well I suppose we shouldn't be too premature in predicting any uh, New Zealand victory at this stage because the loss of Andrew Jones is a bit of a blow to New Zealand because he certainly a, a very much an informed batsman and a very important member of the New Zealand innings and that was a good dismissal and New Zealand now at 97 for two in the 22nd over. And Jones not really using a lot of footwork there, and just flicking at that one, trying to hit it off the back foot, square through the offside, three point. He just found the edge, and David Williams very happy with that. Off they go to raise the hundred and to get Martin Crowe's first run. Quickly run single, Martin Crowe's on the way and New Zealand reached their 100 in the 24th over. And there's Great Batch going, there's a catch this time to deep cover, he's gone, he's slugged once too often, that's the wicket the West Indies won, Desmond Haynes has taken the catch, Mark Great Batch goes, the West Indies have had, finally, something to cheer about, but what? An innings from Great Batch. Rather subdued for a while, Paddy Batch, charging this time, going towards the ball, the ball bouncing and going off the face and carrying all the way down to the offside sweeper, Desmond Haynes, who makes no mistake. So New Zealand now losing their third wicket in the 24th over for 100. Benjamin lost his footing coming around and it goes for four. He would have got there, but it's a little bit slippery from last night's rain. Short and pulled away. Benjamin just dropping it in short and pulled very quickly to get onto it. So two boundaries in the last two overs for New Zealand. It's a good shot from Rutherford, banged in short from Benjamin, trying his luck. And Crow Punk, a big shot, it's in the air though, he's going to just clear Haynes. Oh -ho. Crow gets an edge, he gets a bit of luck too. That's a better shot, that's going to be another four, it's going to beat Ambrose down there. And that ends a very productive over for New Zealand, with nine runs coming from the eighth over bowl by Benjamin. And Crow is batting much better too, hitting that ball to backward point, and that's his third four in four balls. Yes, you'll see here in this replay that uh, Hooper was just a little guilty of getting too wide there, giving Crow a chance to free his arms. Oh, that's another nick, and he's gone again. Williams has his third catch. Ambrose has the first wicket, and New Zealand have lost their fourth wicket with Rutherford caught by Williams, bowled by Ambrose for eight. New Zealand at 135 for four in the 34th over. As we see here, the ball full and leaks, just a little bit of a way swab. Rutherford didn't really get to the pitch of the ball, pushed the bat out, orthodox catch to the keeper. Well, really, no footwork at all there from Ken Rutherford, so he's gone, he'll be disappointed. It's 135 for four now as drinks come onto the field. Right. Yep. Powerful shot by Harris. He's got it through. Well run, back for three. 
141 for four. Crow on the sweep, he's used that shot more often recently, that's four more. The over completed at Eden Park, and it's 145 for four after 35. Full toss, straight down the long arm, this will be four. All it needs, Peter, is just the odd boundary coming each over, and that's exactly what's happening. And it just puts the game that much closer to New Zealand's chance of victory. Over pitch, you don't get too many of those, a full toss, in fact, and uh, Crow straight back down the pitch through mid on. something to uh, the crowd. That's the answer to the Mexican wave by Martin Crow. 159 for four. Was that a brilliant stroke? It was a good shot, Henry. In fact, it's his eighth boundary, and uh, was anything fractionally short, he's onto that very quickly. And this is what New Zealand have been doing in the last half dozen or so overs, where they have been getting that four ball away. against it's close 50 there it is he's 52 he's played wonderfully well 166 for four well Richard that was a marvelous stroke again wasn't it yes but it's a captain's innings as well nine fours in that he's got it through Cummins coming back and being too short once more First delivery and Crow pounces on it for yet another four. West Indies deciding they need to slip in there. And as a result, there's no offside sweeper. So Cummins has to be more accurate than that. As soon as the ball penetrated the field, it was always going to go through for four. He's gone. Cummins comes back and claims the wicket of Harris caught behind. It's perhaps not the batsman that New Zealand wanted to get, the West Indies wanted to get most, but at least it's a wicket. And New Zealand have lost their fifth at 174. It's a fairly low key dismissal here, it's almost as though he just played it into the keeper's hands and whenever Williams runs towards the stumps, you know that the batsman has nicked the ball. And so New Zealand now on the 42nd over, 174 for five. shot for just a single from Patel to get off the mark well you would think that Patel had been in for ages playing that shot yes. Haynes and he's well not out says the umpire Haynes is sure he had him Hit the stumps direct, and Desmond Haynes is dumbfounded that the umpire didn't give him out. Peter McConnell seemed to be in a very good position. Yes, he did, and they got a second run as a result of this, but we'll just watch with interest. Patel, live, appeared to be short of his ground. Yes, well, a good meet. Well, well short. No wonder Desmond Haynes looked to the heavens. But he might have been a bad one. And here's, oh my goodness gracious, another chance of a run out, and the West Indies muffed this one terribly. So Deepak Patel has got all the luck running for him. Brilliant bit of feeling by Courtney Ambrose at mid off. But this shot was very strong, but see how it goes away to the left of Ambrose, and he's almost on the ring, on the edge of the ring there, and so he's well away. 
and the fumbling that goes on. And he's batting in marvellous form now, and that's a perfect illustration of it. As we'll see here, Marshall over pitching, Crow just playing it straight back, just slightly on the onside, past the bowler, four runs. Patel playing another big shot. He's a man for the big shots, Bob. Well, really, it's what New Zealand need at this stage, isn't it? And uh, the effect's prepared to go for them. 194 for five, 46. Ten runs needed for New Zealand's second ever victory in one day internationals against the West Indies. And an historic occasion. The first one was in Christchurch at Lancaster Park. And here it looks as if Crow will take them to victory. And that's going to beat Ambrose, is it? Oh no, he gets around the boundary pretty quickly. Crow in the air and safely. And that's the 200 for New Zealand. With the 48th over being bowled, New Zealand just need 204 for victory, and they've made 200 of them. Crow going back past Benjamin, and that's the win for New Zealand. The ball was in the air, the ball was dropped, but it's still going to go for four. And as they did in Christchurch, Ten years ago, Martin Crow has slammed the ball and has taken the score to 206 for five. New Zealand has beaten the West Indies, so New Zealand's been up for, three, uh, for five matches in the Benson and Hedges World Cup of 1992. They've had five wins, and Martin Crow has been a huge influence in the New Zealand performance. Magnificent innings again from the New Zealand captain, and he can well look very pleased as well as very tired after today's effort. Well, New Zealand got an explosive start with Mark Greatbatch scoring 63 from 77 deliveries, including three sixes, a couple of them, shall we say, rather unorthodox shots, one over extra cover off Marshall and one over backward point off Kirtley Ambrose. But Martin Crowe provided the rock-solid anchor for the innings after the loss of one or two wickets in the middle order. 81 from 81 deliveries he finished as he hit the winning runs as well. And New Zealand had nine balls to spare at the end, 206 for five, a win by five wickets. A look at those West Indian bowling figures. Will Kirtley Ambrose suffer a little under the onslaught of Mark Great Badge, Malcolm Marshall did to a certain extent, Anderson Cummins was hit around by Crow towards the end, Winston Benjamin bowled very well, ironically had the winning runs hit from him, and Carl Hooper was accurate with his off spinners. So New Zealand continue their great form in this Benson and Hedges World Cup. They're five from five now. The West Indies have a few problems, only two wins from five matches. They've got to win uh, two or three more, I'd suggest, to have a chance of making the semi-finals. Let's get the after-match comments now from the captains, Richie Richardson of the West Indies and Martin Crowe, who was also named as the Benson and Hedges player of the match. We had to work really hard today to beat them because they're, they're a very good side and uh, they got stuck in today when, when they only had 200 to defend. And they came at us, but uh, we showed some guts and courage out there and we came through, which is great. Just going back to the West Indies batting, uh, the, the Deepak Patel move came off again for the third weekend in a row here at Eden Park. Did you ever think that you might not use that against the, the West Indies, knowing the way they tend to bat at times? Sure. Um, I, I thought that what we'd do was almost sort of uh, call a bluff, if you like, bolt two overs and pull them off, um, just to sort of throw a little bit of uncertainty into their minds, perhaps. But but did bowl well again, so why, why take him off? In fact, a, a rude taking him off at all because the next over that I think Gavin Bowl went for 14. Richie Richardson, uh, how did you guys uh, cope or like the idea of facing a spin bowler so early on? Well, um, <clears throat> it's not the usual thing. and um, <clears throat> I guess uh, because of the, the condition suits that. Uh, you know, he bowled well and the wicket is a sort of wicket where, you know, it bites a bit and the ball was, you know, the surface was a bit soft. So, I mean, you know, the thing is that uh, you try something and it works, and um, and you you know you continue to use it. Um, but I, guess, I think our problem there was that um, yeah the wicket was not something that we're used to. It was very slow, and you know, New Zealand bowlers they know exactly what to do, and we just couldn't come to terms with the, the bowlers. When you started your innings, did you have uh, a target score in mind? Well, actually, looking at the wicket, I, you know it looked it looked good. It looked pretty good, um, and I think anything uh, <coughs> like. 230, 240 would be a very good score. 
But then after the match started and you know realised that uh, it wasn't a very hard surface, we realised we would struggle a little bit, especially with uh, the sort of bowlers that uh, New Zealand has. Uh, you know they're not that quick, so and the ball wasn't coming out of the bat, so it was very difficult for a batsman to really get into our strides. You know, but uh, as I said before, we've got to give them credit. They they know the job, they stuck to it, and uh, they came out on top. Martin, a word about the batting of uh, Mark Graypatch for the second weekend in a row. He's gone out and blasted opposition fast bowlers. You will have surprised us up in the dressing room to see him charging Malcolm Marshall and then Kurt Ambrose. But the thing was, he had to show some guts and, and show mm. that uh, you know he was out there and out to, there to do a job, and he, uh, he took him on, and that's just what we want. So New Zealand the winners over the West Indies by five wickets here at Eden Park in Auckland. New Zealand still the leaders.